please tell us who you are and what you do. Hi, I am Laura Jean McKay and I am a writer. And for the last 10 years or so, I've been focusing on writing about animals completely obsessively um, and about our relationship with other animals and the way that we talk with them. And that has resulted in this book, The Animals in That Country. What is your latest book about? The Animals in That Country is a road story with a bit of a difference. Um, it stars a woman who works in a wildlife park and her favourite things to do are to have a drink and go and make up voices for the animals who live in the park and her favourite animal there is Sue who is a dingo. But one day this strange new flu strikes the country and Jean gets the flu and one of the key symptoms of the flu is that people can finally understand what other animals are saying. And her and the dingo Sue hop in a camper van and take off down the country and uh, do a road trip journey in which they meet all sorts of other animals and speak to them. So the book is really an exploration of how we do and don't talk to other animals and what happens when they talk back to us. Why do animals feature so heavily in your writing? So in all of my work, I'm really, really interested in how things are represented and also in communication, how we communicate and miscommunicate with each other. And there's no relationship like the relationship that we have with other animals, whether they're the pets that we live with or the wild animals that we see outside or the birds in the street. Um, then the sort of miscommunication that happens all the time when you go outside and stare up at a crow and thinking, what are they actually saying? Why are they staring at me in that way? Um, do they mean me harm? And so I just really became excited about the idea that maybe if we had a shared language, uh, things might start to change between humans and other animals. Um, maybe we would start to treat them differently, maybe with some more respect. Um, maybe we would get as far away from them as possible, like some characters in the book do. Or maybe we'd be like Jean, who's the main human character in the book, and sort of go on a quest to find out more and more what different animals have to say. What can they teach us about life? So when I was writing the book, I really tried hard to make sure that the animal characters didn't necessarily have something to teach us because so often in literature, animals are represented as these prophets or they speak very poetically or they tell us the answer to the meaning of life. And But we are all animals, humans are animals as well, and so I wanted the animals in the book to have their own lives that weren't necessarily focused on what humans were or weren't doing and their whole lives didn't revolve around the humans in the world but on their own worlds and ways of seeing things. How do you craft the character of an animal? In a way, I focused on each animal's superpower. <laughs> so humans are very, very visually focused. We our, our lives revolve around what we see. For dogs, they have an incredible chamber in the front of their brain, which is a smell processing chamber, which is just many thousand times more than human um, olfactory abilities. So I really focused Sue the dingoes world perspective on smell so everything she did was was based around smell and then there were bat characters and of course they have sonar which humans can barely even comprehend how does sonar work imagine seeing the world through sonar what would that be like and um the same thing happened with whale characters i read that um way way back in, in the beginnings of time, whales actually emerged from out of the ocean and, and grew stumpy legs and walked around for a while. And then at some point, um, 
in an evolutionary way, decided that actually it wasn't so great on the land, so they would go back to the ocean. So in the whale scene, the whales are calling to the humans, come home, come home, it's better here in the water. We've worked it all out, you know, um, come back to us. So I really wanted to focus on those incredible abilities that animals already have and to try to um, expand on that and explore that in the book. What has your research taught you about animals? In order to try to work out how to write this book, um, I actually did a whole PhD in creative writing, but also in animal studies and specifically in how animals talk in novels. So I'm kind of Dr. Doolittle in that way. (laughs) Um, So it was really, really helpful to be able to go into that level of research and to have experts um, guiding me in what they call animal studies. So there's some wonderful people in Australia um, uh, who I joined up with and we would do reading groups and read um, really strange and difficult texts looking at human-animal relationships and um, the often problematic and uh, sometimes joyful way that that we work and don't work with animals. Uh, so some of the great things about joining up with those animal studies researchers was that sometimes they would bring along other animals. So there was a regular dog who would come and join in our reading group and we'd all be sitting around talking very, very seriously about you know, canine representation and there would be a dog sitting in the middle, you know, having a sleep while we're all, um, so that, that sort of, um, it makes it less abstract. It meant that, um, it wasn't just, we weren't just talking about ideas or theories. We were talking about real animals and how what we do affects them. And I remember at one conference, um, someone walked in with a with a dingo who worked at a dingo rescue centre and so we're at this conference talking about these serious things and there was a dingo just sitting in the aisle um, hanging out with us. <laughs> That's a real benefit of, of, of um, researching animal studies is that often there's animals around as well. What is misunderstood about animals? The most misunderstood thing I think about our relationship with other animals is that we think that we are the center of their world and actually they are the center of their world because they have their own agency uh, their own feelings their own experiences Uh, even if we live very very closely with another animal uh, as a pet we go about our lives and have separate lives to them and they go about their lives and have separate lives to us. They have experiences, um, they have losses, uh, they have loves and joys that we can never know about. And I think it's really, really important to acknowledge that animals have their own experience and their own path and their own trajectory and that we can be there as companions to them as much as they can be there as companions to us. Um, And also uh, the way that we think about animals in the wider wider world can be considered that way too, um, that they are not there for our benefit, uh, they're there for their own benefit and um, the way that we become part of their lives uh, and whether that's a positive thing or not is very much up to us. We have a lot of responsibility in that way. I want people to really enjoy the animals in that country and I hope that when people put down the book they can slightly change the way that they relate to other animals, even if it's just a little bit, maybe just by listening to um, the dogs in their life a little more or by stopping and um, staring at the birds and thinking about maybe what they really want in the world. I think all of us can just try a little bit harder with the animals that are in our lives um, to try to make our relationship better with them.